Hey folks, this is Billy from Dankless Wargaming. Hey, this is Heath with Team Table War Hawaii. And welcome to the Path to Redemption, the Warhammer 40,000 Dark Angels podcast. Our aim is to provide 40k players with the tactical and hobby skills that they need in order to compete in this wonderful hobby of ours. Alright, this week we've got a bunch of new releases. We don't have too many big lists in the meta watch. We do have the new data slate to talk about. Uh, the mm-hmm. main segment, we have a, a main segment ho- monthly hobby challenge wombo combo because of uh, what we were challenged to do last month, which was to go have a trip that was 40k related in some way. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little sneak preview. Heath wins big time. Uh, <laughs> then uh, we'll come up, we have to come up with a new monthly challenge, sort of on the fly today. And then the uh, community interaction was a little light this month, so hopefully we get some more stuff this on this episode so we have something to talk about and give some shout-outs for next month's episode. All right, so hopping into the new releases. Uh, the Bayard's Revenge. This is actually a Black Templars model. It's $45. But Yo, it looks great, though. Sword. It looks awesome. Yeah. It's a dude with a sword and a cloak, or like a, the um, tall the bird, tabard. right? There. Like, the tabard, yeah. yeah. The tabard. So... Obviously, we could turn him into a Dark Angels guy really quick. I kind of want to... I, I saw it. The first thing I thought was take the Space Marine guy, swap out the Orc for the Chaos guy on the base of uh, Gilliman's base, and then you have, like, um, Azrael, like, stabbing a member of the Fallen or, like, some Chaos dude, hmm. like what this guy's doing instead of an Orc. Oh, the Orc's still pretty cool. But that was, like, the first thing that popped yeah. in my head. I thought that was really cool. Do you, um, do you know if there's actually rules for Bayard's Revenge? Or is it just like a diorama model? That is an excellent question. I'm not aware if there are being any rules. I don't know either, because it's a yeah, it's a big base. So yeah. if he hits an aura of any sort, it'll be pretty pretty gnarly. But yeah. Yeah. So here's an interesting thing. Um oh, that link got expunged from the Games Workshop website, so I was gonna look it up. Um so we have uh for $10 more, interesting enough, we can get Core Swain. So we're recording on, what, Saturday, October 29th. So we have the 29th. pre-orders are up uh, for next week. So we got to see Core Swain, which is the new Horse Heresy guy. He's the member of the Ninth Order, Paladin of the Ninth Order. And he's the first captain of the Legend. Dark Angels. First captain of the Dark yeah. Angels, if I do recall correctly. And an absolute and come- G. <laughs> this is... Yeah, and he, he comes with a hooded head and a helmet, winged helmet head. Mm, so love it, very cool. And so that he's fifty five. The new Demios Pred, the support predator, uh, is sixty five dollars. And what I'm excited about is it comes with an executioner plasma destroyer. Oh, that so that says uh, really? weapons of the dark age. Me, please. So really? when this thing comes okay. out. Um, All right. Uh, we will probably find it in some Dark Angels lists simply because we can put a Plasma Destroyer on it. At least I'm going to yeah, try. It, I'm going to get yeah, one and try. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the hobby side right. of things, uh, there's new cutters for $50, a new drill for $35, a new knife, a knif for $34, and a mold line remover for $25. Okay. So I have mixed feelings about this. Uh, on one hand, um, GW hobby prices or hobby tool prices are high. Um, so, because a, a exacto knife for $34, bro, just go to Michael's, yeah. man. Like, and you can get a whole kit of hobby knives that will be of higher quality for $5, maybe $10. Um, that said, um, the mold line remover, I've actually, there's, there's a, so the way the mold line removers are, it's basically a safety knife. So it's like a scraper with the the, the sharp edge yeah. on the inside. The idea is that so you can use it to cut, and if you slip, it won't stab you. Because I always use an exacto knife like that, yeah. and um, there's there's a safety risk. Uh, so if if you are you know, well, maybe a little clumsy, or you're not you don't have quite as steady hands, or if you have some sort of thing where like accidentally cutting yourself is a really big deal and not just a band aid. Um, it's actually not like, hey, 25 bucks for is cheaper than a trip to the emergency room. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, and cutters, just regular old like, you know, diagonal cutters uh, for clip and sprues. This is not unreasonable. 
And I'm going to tell you why is because like high end scale modelers like Tamiya and that kind of stuff, like yeah. the Gunpla people, like they pay this kind of money for those things. And and my local hobby store here in Honolulu uh, has some of that stuff. And there has been a set that's like 45 bucks. I'm like, bro, what, what the hell? What is this? And one of my other friends that's really into like scale modeling is like, no, 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 that's good because they are a perfect flush cut. And you basically oh, yeah. don't have to like trim it up afterwards. Oh, nice. Because they're that sharp and they're that good. It's like, well, okay, maybe there's something to it. Um, so yeah, uh, there is, there's that. So anyway, just to look, you're going to, so the, the, there's a, like, I think they talked about it a little bit on long war this week, last week, whatever. And there's a return on investment. Like you spend 10 bucks, you get a, a decent product. If you spend 20 bucks on the same category of product, it's not going to be twice as good. It's sort of, it's going to be like, you know, 80% of the possible, it's going to go to 85% of the possible. So right. if you think that you're at the point where that extra, you've got that extra $10 or whatever that extra to spend, and you need the extra, you know, four to five percent efficiency or, or efficacy, do it. If not, you know, find something that's that's closer to your, you know, match your your spending to your skill set. Because uh, right. I tell you right now, I'm not going to get fifty bucks worth of value out of that. So because yeah. I'm I'm just going to like scrape it with a knife. But well, and I'll tell you that I I could tell the difference between going and buying like the five dollar snips or the ten dollar snips at Mm -hmm. a hardware store that I was using for years and like pinching my fingers and like bad pinching, like yeah. extremely painful mm -hmm. blister blood blisters to going to the $35 uh, games workshop hobby snips and going and it, like, it's I've never going back. Like it was one of the best investments I ever made in my life. Yeah. So, um, the sales are good. Like army painter also makes really good hobby snips, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you like Tamiya, like they, they know That's how to make want. hobby equipment. They they do good make good stuff. So anyway, so there you go. There's some of those hobby tips that we've been we were talking about. So now this is like a little bit more of the fun side. You can get a bolt gun uh, keychain for fifteen dollars from the Games Workshop website. They have a Dark Angels Purity Seal that's twenty three dollars, and then there's an Advent so, calendar of Chibi. I think I don't know if this is the same one I got, but I think I might have actually gotten one of these Purity Seals oh, accidentally. Nice. <laughs> More on that later. Carry on. <laughs> and then this advent counter that's the it's the chibi things, like the little cute plastic space marines, and of course it's a hundred dollars, and of course one of them is a dark angel. So if you like little mm -hmm. collectible things, you can get a little collectible dark angels guy along with a bunch of other chapters for an advent counter. So what, twenty four, twenty five of them? So that's lots of fun. Have you seen have you seen the Dark Angels Funko Pop? Yes. Yeah, it's 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 adorable. I have one. It was given to me as a gift. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. He's in my case. He's in my case back here somewhere. I think my no reflection fleece is is from right. his computer screens up hiding it. But yeah, so yeah, no, he's he's in my case. It's good. He's got a little sword, a little storm shield and power sword, and a, and a and a hood. All right. All right. So moving on to Meta Watch, the big thing for Dark Angels players is we had the new data slate come out. And you can go look at that on the Games Workshop uh, Warhammer community website. The big takeaways here that we're looking at is that the uh, Dark Angels, according to their data that they were looking at as Games Workshop, they said that Dark Angels had a 45% win rate as of October 17th. And when they're looking at win rates, and they have a video that goes along with this, it's like 23 minutes long with one of the studio guys. It's a good video. Talking yeah. about it. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, they explain uh, that... When they're looking at things, they have like a 5% area of marg uh, margin for error. So they they look at 50% and then they go plus 5 and minus 5. And so if you're in that plus 5 or minus 5 and 50%, they're sort of like, okay, this is kind of what we were looking for. and This is what we want. Uh, it's when something goes beyond the 5% above, you know, like they go above 5% or below 5% from 50% that they go, okay, we need to fix something. And one yeah, of those I things that they saw... Uh, where the idea Harlequins being that were one of them, yeah, yeah. The idea being that fifty percent win rate, you know, every like all things being considered, every yeah. faction should have basically an even shot to win against every other faction. Um, right. When you average out for you know player skill, uh, then yeah, I agree with that. So if given the aggregate of the data, 
something is trending 5% higher, 5% low, they think there's an issue. So, yep. Yep. And, uh, and then if you go to, uh, 40 kstatscom using the ITC Battle app. They looked at 23 or 2,304 games in Nephilim. And of that, if you take out the mirror matches, Dark Angels have a 40.66% win rate. And then they have an average points for, like victory points for, of 58.21 and an average victory points against of 65.86. So we're averaging hmm. like a seven point loss across that, 2, is that your plus games. Is that your research or did you grab that from someplace else? No, that's like 40k that, stats.com. The, the 40k stats. Okay. Um, yeah, that's interesting. what they were showing. So, yeah. So, I, I really liked uh, the designer commentary that came with the data slate and then the mm-hmm. video kind of explaining it. Um, listen, I'm a, I'm a numbers guy uh, to some extent, um, you know, without having like a, a calculus degree or something, but. Uh, Right. Just it, it speaks really deep to my my engineering soul, like knowing the sources and methods behind how they like the assumptions and how they came to these conclusions. And I would like to know, it, yeah, if they corrected for the mirror matches, because um, that can right. really throw some of these things off. Uh, but yeah, like hey, once again, if when the designs, you know, the head of the design studio gets on the microphone and says, "Hey, here's why we made these decisions. This is what we're looking at." Um, it takes, yeah, you get you get intent, uh, which. Previously, you've just been trying to like read the emperor's tarot for, uh, right? And that's and that's good, right? More transparency into the way that the game is operated. So I can only hope that they they move forward with that. Um, uh, so there's a couple things here that are really affecting us. Uh, the first one, obviously, is the global space marine buff, which is a very right. very minor adjustment. Uh, but so. Uh, what what was the what was the thing that changed for the Space Marines, Bailey? So this is interesting. It's something we've actually been talking about in the podcast for a couple months now. Is the shock yeah. tactics secondary? They've increased the points that you score every turn for that. So it's four victory points every time you but, take an objective away from an opponent. And yeah. You have so a if you flip an objective, that. yeah, it's four points at the end of your turn instead of three, like it was. So you're like, that seems really minor. I'm like, well, but. I really like this stat that you pulled out here. We lose on an average of seven points. So, hey, four more points on average per turn or per game. That's not going to close the gap, but it's going to make it close enough uh, that it's going to potentially throw some other decisions into play. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and so I think I think Dark Angels are very well suited to play Shock Tactics. Uh, you You can't, like, Deathwing doesn't do it super well because they tend to hold and hold uh raven wing right. can i think i think green wing can um so but we'll see uh that's we'll talk more about that later that's we'll talk about one of the lists i'm trying to i'm, I'm working on right now but right. other things that happened here in the in in the data slate were about the like the the debuffs or the a little bit of the nerfs just just not really a nerf um it is a nerf i'm not but <laughs> They, they, they detuned a couple of the more powerful interactions that the top performing right. armies had. Uh, so specifically, Tyranids and Harlequins, and then also Necrons. Uh, so to start with Tyranids, uh, the most powerful of the Fet Tyranid factions was Leviathan because all of their basically, everything that was more than one wound had permanent transhuman. And so when you have a... A, a cheap, highly effective troop in your Tyranid Warrior, which is three wounds, toughness five, yeah. and you can take like twenty of those little dudes in and in, in a troop slot, so they're obsec, uh, and they have transhuman. It's really tough to interact with, so they took it away from them. Uh, it's unclear, kind of right now, what the intent was. Is, is do they keep the mini transhuman where they can't be wounded on twos? Uh, because the exact wording doesn't seem to indicate that it is. Uh, so you can they they are unaffected by that. So only their monsters in Leviathan are affected by transhuman. That's a big deal because, well, we're really good at throwing out high damage, you know, high strength, right. you know, high rate of fire stuff with plasma and with thunder hammers, right? Slash maces and multi melters. So that makes our matchup specifically into Tyranids much, much, much more 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 palatable. Yeah. So. Uh, what was the thing from Harlequins that they did to Harlequins? I don't, I don't know if I completely understand it. I'm just report, repeating what I've heard on other shows. So they changed uh, the Blaze of Light from the Light Sadith 
Uh, that each time a unit with this characteristic makes a normal move or advances in your movement phase in your following shooting phase, the unit counts as having remained stationary. This does not apply if the unit is embarked in a transport. Uh, so there was something to do with... Let's see here. I'm looking through it. Uh, from from what I understand... I'm quite sure. ...is that basically they count as remaining stationary, even if they advance. Yeah. So their vehicles, and their vehicles, I think, auto advance six inches. So their vehicles, yeah. which were transports, would move like twenty three inches or whatever. They always have a four up and vol save. You know, they're you know they have the trans hitments. So you can't hit them on better than fours from certain range, uh, and then everything inside of them, all the harlequins inside of them, can shoot their pistols because they count as having not moved. So basically, it says, all right, well, if you want to actually shoot with your primary offensive weapon in this army, which is the the Harlequin's pistols, right? The fusion pistols right. and the neuro destructors and the... You have to get out of the transport and take some risk. Okay, I, it seems to make sense. So having re looked through the article again, right, so basically they were able to ignore the minus one to hit with their assault weapons while being embarked. Mm -hmm. And the change of the rule says, no, if yeah. you're embarked, you don't get to ignore that minus one. So it makes, and as we've talked about previously with Harlequins, Harlequins worst matchup is other Harlequins because they don't like negatives to hit. Like they like being able yeah. to hit everything on threes and just blow you up. So if you start dumping minuses to hit on them, they start not doing very well very quickly, which is why we I like don't having think... our aversion. Yeah. I don't think they have access to a lot of reroll mechanics. Um, right. So... And they, they rely on that on that you know hit you know cap in order to to as their primary damage mitigator, along with their four pinball save. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So um, as I said, it makes them make a couple more decisions. They either have to take some risk and get out, or not, or or stay safe and then lose a lot lose a lot of efficiency on their shooting. So that's good. So it doesn't. I, I like what they're doing. These are very specific, right? Narrow, like targeted. Hey, this interaction isn't working the way we want to. Um, so along the same lines is what they did to Necrons. So Necrons right. uh, have two very specific changes. So a previous data slate gave the core keyword to all vehicles and, and overhauled the way that their uh, their protocols worked. Well, uh, Catacomb Command Barges are vehicles, so they became core, which means they could give themselves the order to, do be to will be done. And the Silent King uh, is a vehicle, and so he's core. So now what this means is you can have an interaction where another character gives the Silent King the order to will be done. Which just doesn't make any sense. That's stupid. Mm. Yeah, uh, but it was legal, sense. right? And also, because the Silent King was core, his little men here, the two pylons with the strength 12, flat damage 6, like, oh god, oh god, you know, like be uh, beams of death. Um, they were core, which means they could be resurrected by a technomancer of the appropriate dynasty. And everyone was like, I don't know, does that make sense? Does it not? And like, and like TOs were providing, you know, event specific rulings on it. And so the, the work, the design workshop stepped in and said, no, we don't want that to happen. So they took the core keyword away from Zarek and from the catacomb command barge. Uh, so Zarek doesn't get to reroll his own hits, which is great. Uh, yeah. I don't think he should. Because no other character in the game basically gets to do that, uh, other than chapter masters, and they have to like give themselves a specific buff and not somebody else. Um, right. And he also doesn't reroll wounds in close combat, which is also great. Uh, yeah. So there you go. Um, it's a it's a minor tune down. He did say in the video that the Necrons are on the bubble. They're at that like fifty five like point four. Uh, so mm -hmm. they're they're being watched. And I've frequently said that after because I played Necrons a lot. Um, yeah. they score points just so efficiently and something like there's something like, I, I think that their, their point scoring is a little out of hand. Um, and you could probably make a couple of small changes that would make it a little more reasonable because the fact that obsec scarabs can, you know, just go do an action on a thing and get four points at the end of your turn and there's nothing you can do about it. So do you think that's something so that yeah. they'll fix by making scarabs or something not obsec or cost more? Or do you think, because it's a secondary thing, that they'll wait for the new season of 40k and just change their secondaries? I think they'll probably just wait for the season, um, for the for the next season. And the way I would do it, so so the way it's worded, it says, you know, Treasures of the Aeons and Ancient Machinery, which are their two kind of really broken ones. 
say, hey, uh, they you score, you do an action, you score these points, uh, and at the end, at the beginning of your next turn. But if you're obsec, you score at the end of your turn. Well, okay. the most powerful custom dynasty that everyone takes makes literally everything in the army obsec. So that's like, well, duh, okay. that's of course it's going to happen, right? So I think if you just said, hey, if it's a troop choice, it scores at the end All of right. your turn. So that way you, you're incentivized, incentivized to take warriors and immortals, uh, which they've kind of gone away from that now. Like most of the most of the Necron lists are very, very score peck forward and scarabs. Okay. Uh, they run like specialist attachments like vanguards uh, and fast attacks like outriders. So just maximizing okay. all the, the super fast, super aggressive killy stuff. And then a silent king because he gets you all the CP back from that because he's a supreme commander. But Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always yeah. have a supreme commander. The other one I yeah. think that might be interesting to see how it plays out is that Admech had a lot of their previous nerfs removed because they had some all of terrible them. All of them removed. Yeah. yeah, they're back to, here's your book. Do what it says in the book. So, And, um, and if you remember yeah. that, if you remember new book uh, Admech at any time you've had to play that, it's uh, It was something terrifying. Else. <laughs> it's something else, man. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder what so, it will look like going forward. Um, you'll still see some more of those. All yeah. right. I so also that... want to say, so yeah, I want to address another thing. Um, there's a lot of people that say that it's too complicated to follow how many rules changes there are. Um, and I'm going to respectfully disagree with that. Uh, I think okay. they do a really good job of they, hey, there is a PDF that comes out. It says, these are the rules. These are the current version of the rules. Right. So you're not required to like take the new issue and go back and like find your old copy of it and pen and do pen and ink changes. Right. Or like yeah. print a, or like, like an, a white dwarf comes out. They like give you right. a yeah. thing and you like print stickers out and put them into your book. Like, nope, here's a PDF. Do these things. Um, and they do a reasonably good job of saying these are the new ones. This is what's outmoded. You know, blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, I like, so do you need to carry a PDF around with your codex? Yeah, you do. Am I okay with that? I'm absolutely okay with that. Uh, the reason why is because I would, I want the game to be balanced, right? The, the, or as close to balance as you can make a, a, an inherently, you know, unbalanced game like this. You're right. An asymmetrical so, game. It's asymmetrical. The scoring is asymmetrical. The factions are asymmetrical. It's not chess. It's not even Starcraft. Yeah. Uh, it is, you know, there's yeah. eight times as many factions as there are in StarCraft, which means there is, you know, three to the eighth power more interactions you have to, you have to balance, right? Not to mention the thousand yeah. data sheets there are in the game. So, like, um, again, you know, my my professional job is, you know, engineering on nuclear power plants. And look, you get a thing, you say this is the new rules. You go and you look at it and you change your stuff. You, you want everything to be accurate, right? It's not that hard. So I want to say, you oh, well, know, and, quit your whining. But <laughs> I kind of do want to say quit your whining, right? This is what we wanted 10 years ago exactly. when Games That's Workshop literally say. said nothing. And yeah. it came down That's to organizations like Frontline to do this. Now they're doing it and you're not happy that the game's too complex? Like, come on. War, like Magic well, yeah, literally it, advertises himself as the most complex card game. Because complexity gives you room for, you know, for innovation, right? It gives you space. Right. Sorry, well, rant over. That was the Please point. continue. No, that's all right. Because that was the point I was going to make is that I remember, and you'll remember, Heath, playing over a decade ago that you would have a new edition. Space Marines would always get a new book, but you might not get a new book in the new edition. And there would be only a couple new books yeah. a year. And if something was broken, they wouldn't fix it till another edition came out three years in the future. So the fact that they're actually years going, hey, every six yeah <laughs> so like yeah. every when i played dark eldar i didn't get a new book for 12 years yeah you're oh well, <laughs> so. i remember when dark eldar were uh gosh what did they call that on their website classic the classic line like it was like a, like almost forge world prices for old pewter models i can remember i don't remember there was like that. some special huh, term okay. and, and and it was like a separate part of the old games workshop website where they kept like Sisters of Battle and Drukari back when they were just Dark Eldar because they were their models were so old and the rules were so outdated that they were just they had sort to, like, of like print them on demand. Relegated. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was, they got a little disrespect, but then they got the new plastics and you know how it is. So, yeah, the fact that we're in a, in a realm where every six months we're going to get a new uh, 
like season of 40k and then in between that we're going to have data slates that'll do some quick fixes based on what we've seen so mm -hmm. far through that season this yeah. is fantastic yeah yeah all for right sure. so is that our is that Absolutely. our metal watch then oh wait, well, you wanted to talk about your new yeah watch. let's do that oh do I, oh yeah i guess we can talk about it here okay so um we don't have any any you know winning list pulled from the community this month uh so yeah i have like like in order to give some crunch uh to the episode i'm going to talk about uh what i did so i've been working on this list for a couple months and uh, i'm going to go play in a tournament uh this not not this weekend right now but right seven days from now um so i'm gonna do i'm gonna you know i've always said hey i'm from table or hawaii well table or hawaii is the you know table or sponsored uh you know, 40k club. And normally we, we require that you, you know, go play on play a tournament off the the island of Oahu at least once per year. COVID kind of wrecked that. But um, yeah, I can believe that. Yeah. So now I'm I'm yeah, we're gonna me and a couple other guys are gonna uh, fly over to the big island of Hawaii and play at a tournament in Hilo, which is on the northeast coast. Uh, so this is what I'm gonna bring. Uh, this is a battalion of Dark Angels. So it has uh, Azrael as the warlord, as one does. Uh, Ezekiel, with uh, the three powers, are Mindworm, Aversion, and Righteous Repugnance. Okay. Um, then it has an Interrogator Chaplain with a Jump Pack, who is the Master of Sanctity. Excellent. Uh, he is not a Wise Orator. Uh, he okay. Instead, he has Decisive Tactician. Okay. So, and then his powers are Catechism of Fire, which is the plus one to wound uh, for shooting against the closest target, and Recitation of Focus, which is plus one to hit against anything in ranged. Right. And he has yep. a uh, the Benediction of Fury, which is the Space Marine Relic that is plus two strength, minus two AP, three flat damage, and does one mortal wound if you roll a six to wound. So the idea with him is, I think Interrogator Chaplains are killy enough. I don't need to buff him to make him better. Um, and the rest of this list you're going to see is a lot of shooting, right? So I think him right. being able to buff shooting and then pop out and go whack something in close combat uh, is a good is a good flex, right? So, okay, so troops. I have a squad of assault intercessors. with a uh, Sergeant has a power sword. Uh, I have a squad of incursors. Uh, and okay. the, they have, uh, the incursors have a haywire mine. And then I have a tactical squad with a heavy bolter. So the idea here is that uh, assault intercessors are cheap, but they put out just a lot of lot of close combat. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and then incursors are kind of a really good blend between shooting and combat, and they have they can forward deploy, so they can make a screen. And yep. the the haywire mine is really interesting because so what a haywire mine does is if you charge them. Then in there, as soon as uh, when a enemy mo a unit moves within engagement range during the charge phase, you can elect to use the haywire mine. You roll a die on a two up; they take d three mortal wounds. All right, if it's That's a vehicle, they take three. So okay. a couple things here is one: this makes you think about charging them, uh, and for things like sisters, right? Your Zephyrum, your Repentia, like come in, like oh, yeah. you're gonna lose a couple of them on the way in. Right. Uh, so think, and then the Dark Angels being able to do things like uh, Line Unbreakable to really mitigate how much stuff gets into combat with you right. is going to help make. So hopefully you can swing that and survive that matchup. Right. Uh, the other thing is, this is another source of out of phase mortal wounds. Right. So I can do, I've got <laughs> two psychers in this list. I'll tell you about the other one in a second. Right. And I can do mortal wounds in your charge phase. And then with the next unit I'll talk about is I can do mortal wounds in my charge phase. So things like yeah. Abaddon, uh, Catan, et cetera, right? I've been having a lot of issues with that. <laughs> and I like to be able to do mortal wounds outside of the normal damage dealing methods. So, okay, uh, so a heavy bolter on a tactical squad, it's just a, a, like a, in your pocket, I spend one CP, here's D3 mortal wounds, right? Yeah. So it's a great way oh, to okay. finish off yeah, finish off things with with Hellfire shells. Okay. Does it still give you? Plus I have five death too. Uh, no, that was the the um the Sky Shard missile, like the the oh, okay. the stratagem Frag for the one. missile launcher to sh the shoot against oh, okay. aircraft. 
Okay. Yeah. That one gave you plus one to hit, and then it did mortal wounds to airplanes. But okay, so I've got five Deathwing Knights. Uh, the sergeant is marked for command with a mastercrafted flail. I have the Ravenwing Apothecary, who's a you know the chief apothecary with uh, yeah. Reliquary the Repentant, right? And then I've got five Assault Centurions. So I've talked about this before, but in case you're new here, Assault Centurions, I think, and Dark Angels are actually really strong because even though they're not core, they're toughness five, they're two up armor, so they benefit from uh, armor contempt. They're really yep. durable, right? And you know, you put them next to an apothecary, they have a six up feel no pain. You put them next to Azrael, who I also have, they have a four up invul save. And when you they're slow, but one of them dies, okay, apothecary reses them, and they have like a yep. like a sixty millimeter base or something stupid like that. So you basically yeah, just geez. get five inches of free movement, <laughs> which makes them get oh, charged. No. And or makes them much easier to charge. And Ezekiel's righteous repugnance spell does not require the core keyword. So I can throw reroll all hits and all wounds on them in close combat. And they have three attacks each before, before shock assault. And the sergeant has four. And those drills are strength 10, like AP4, three flat damage. And there's no minuses so, to hit on them, right? There's no minuses to hit. They can so just if you have a lasting combat, they house. get plus one. So now they're hitting on twos, rerolling. They get, and now they're hitting on twos. twos. Right, probably rerolling because you're going to throw a spell on them, and then also two flamers each and a hurricane bolter each. In this tactical doctrine, they can shoot those things in close combat. Yeah, which is really really dumb. Which is <laughs> which is gross. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, they're not saying they're not uh, course. They don't benefit from any other auras, but yeah. Oh yeah, and they don't. So the other they thing here, the other little bit attack, attack from Ezekiel, because you have to be core to get the yeah, plus because that one requires core. Ezekiel. Yeah. 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 And I think the other, the other thing does too. Um, the honor of a hemant also requires that I believe, but okay. Okay. So, uh, the Sergeant, I, I left the, uh, hurricane bolters off and gave him assault launchers, which honestly okay. saves 10 points, which makes some of the point decisions in this list work. And what assault launchers do is in your, it basically gives you the assault launcher keyword in your charge phase. At the beginning of your charge phase, you can spend one CP to use the assault launchers. What do you think assault launchers do? Uh, doesn't it like a D3 mortal wounds thing? Okay, so you can pick an enemy unit within nine inches, and they have to make a choice. They either A, take D3 mortal wounds, or... Uh, they can't B, uh, set to defend, probably, or overwatch. Yeah, it's they lose minus one attack and they can't overwatch. So I am just going to double. Yeah. So if the unit ducks recover until the end of the turn, they subtract one from attacks and they cannot overwatch or set to defend. Yeah, very powerful. Because don't forget, set to defend yeah, is a so, very under, very, very often forgotten rule that basically you can either choose, like if you're in terrain that that's defensible you get to either set the defend, which is plus one to hit in the ensuing fight phase, or you overwatch on a five up. So this basically just denies. Yeah. Or you can, it's called that. like make ready or so. Yeah. Yeah. So dark angels never need to set to defend because you get plus one to hit when they charge you right? because <laughs> you didn't move in the, in the previous turn, uh, previous in that turns uh, movement phase. But yeah. So that's my other source of out of phase mortal wounds is I can say, okay, you make a decision. You want to take some damage or do you want to, or do you want to like lose an attack? Right. And so for things like Catan or Abaddon, right, it's, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I have a lot of ways here to really like potentially chip off mortal wounds from things that are chip off wounds from things that are wound gated. So, so yeah. Um, so that's the elites. Uh, and those, so those centurions, they're only 65 points each. If you leave the hurricane bubbles off, they're 55. So it's actually not that bad. Um, yeah. So, Heavy supports. I have a seven man Hell Hellblaster squad with assault plasma. I have an eradicator squad. So it's three eradicators with melter rifles, which are the assault mel melter rifles. And then I have another three man eradicator squad with two heavy melter rifles and a multi melter. So the idea here is I used to run five, but I split it up. So two three-man squads makes it easier to like score things, do banners maybe, 
and I can split their fire. And because I can put heavy melts on one and regular melts on the other, I can advance one and keep up and shoot, right? I can throw reroll everything on them with Asriel and they can shoot and do a lot of damage. And I've still got those heavy melts that do D6 plus two at full range or D6 plus four at half range. And the multi melt does, you know, nice. shoots twice. So, so yeah, it's a good, strong fire base, right? And all of these things can interact with the chaplain's plus one to hit and plus one to wound for range shooting. Well, and that's where with the uh, Centurions, giving plus one to wound on all those flamers would be really nasty. Plus, remember, they auto well, yeah, so but if you, over, <laughs> if you overwatch, yeah. you can re- they always they just roll dice and you hit. So very, very well, nasty. The Chaplain's Litanies require, the chaplain's litanies require core, and Centurions oh, aren't core. Right. So it doesn't work on the, on, the, on the Centurions, which would be nuts. But the Eradicators and the Hellblasters, it absolutely does. Yeah. So yeah. So the last thing I haven't discussed is I have an agent of the Imperium, which is Lord Inquisitor Curia Draxus. Yeah. And I spent the CP to give her her Warlord trait with the Orbit of the Emperor's Will. So what Kira does for you is uh, so she's a Ordo Xenos Inquisitor. So she rerolls all hits and wounds against Xenos, which is great because uh, all the top stuff these days is, is Xenos. Uh, she has actually a really good bolter that's like strength six, AP two, or like strength four, strength five, and two flat damage. And she rerolls all hits and wounds with it. It's a storm bolter. Um, nice. And uh, the big thing is uh, she has a targetable smite. Oh, yeah. Very nasty. So she could just go, you. And <laughs> that's really cool. So once again, there's in my out of phase mortal wounds. So you hide Abaddon, I don't care. I'm going to hit him, right? And her warlord trait is a, it's called Radical, uh, which gives her a, a once per battle round, you can reroll a hit, a wound, a saving throw, a damage throw, or damage roll, or a psychic test, or a deny the witch. That's a lot. So I've got four denies in this list. One, uh, yeah. So once again, it's, well, it's once per turn, and those are the things you can reroll. So I've got the Inquisitor that can deny. I've got Ezekiel that can deny uh, twice. And I've got Azrael that can deny once per game. I didn't What's have the points the, uh... to put the, uh, the the dude bro on the Deathwing Knights, but... where the, so That's the, the list, and it comes in at 1996. Chaplain, where's the Chaplain's deny? Because The Chaplain's have don't have the, a deny. Uh... You said, yeah, you said, I thought you said he did. And I was like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? No, oh, my bad. No, no, chaplains don't have the knife. No, no, he doesn't have the wise order, which is the thing that makes us leading squelf on twos. He has a decisive tactician. So the right. whole, yes, yes, yes. so basically everything but the characters, yeah, just, that's the one, you get plus one to advance and plus one to charge. Yeah, because you can technically give him a deny, but you have to spend a warlord trade on him and it's an, that one auto deny. Yeah, yeah. Um, once per game. And because, but you didn't uh, do that. because Ezekiel, or sorry, Azrael is the warlord, I can't yeah. give anyone two warlord traits. And but you, yeah, and I, I elect. I decided that the warlord trait. You didn't, no, I watch, you didn't give no, him no, I didn't. Uh, no, because I've only got one unit in this list that has heavy weapons. Right, and that's the one why. Squad. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah, the one Radicator squad. Um, sometimes when you get like, it may be useful. Um, I had other times where I wish I had it, where I'm like, okay, well, like I'm going to turn three or turn four. Like, like I want to move to the assault doctrine, but I want to keep one unit that may be in combat in the tactical doctrine. Um, but you've all remember most of the stuff that's going to want to do that is ne- going to be next to Azrael and your warlord as a dark angel for one CP can flip someone into any doctrine they want. Yeah. As long as they're within six inches. So, that's the play there. It's like, I don't know if it's going to be useful every turn, every game. So I'll just hold the CP back and I'll use it if I need it. So, yeah. So, so that's the list. Um, okay. Uh, oh, last thing. This list starts with uh, two CP. Whew. You can, well, you can secret two agenda CP. if you really want to. Yep. So you can secret agenda. Um I went back and forth a little bit on whether or not to actually pay for the Inquisitor's uh, Warlord trait, but I went with yes because I think I'm relying a lot on that smite. Uh, And if I end up in a matchup where doing um, Psychic Ritual is a viable course of action, 
like there's no like it's tau or something there's no deny on the board i really want to be able to do that and just get and just be able to rely on it and get it off so that makes sense yeah all right um, and, and do you feel that this is very specific to your meta or in a in like no, the hawaii no. meta where like you're facing a lot of these or do you feel like this is a much more like if like say for me being in the mainland do you feel like you know i'm i'm as far away from your meta as i can almost get do you think it's it's worth it to run it here I, so, so our meta is not very clearly defined. Um, I mean, like once again, and I'm going to play on another Island. Um, okay. so I don't know what their meta is. I know one guy who's going and I know he's playing orcs and I have never played orcs in ninth edition because we don't okay. have any on this Island that I, that, that come to play at our game store on the regular basis. Uh, so yeah. And I think maybe there'd be a night player there as also I've been heard, but as I said, I, I wanted to play green wing and I wanted to play with the centurions. So this is a, this is not a meta decision. This is a, I like the concept of this list and I like the tools okay. and the interactions that it has. Uh, and this is actually really similar to a list we talked about in our big list dump, like what, two months ago, yeah. two and a half, like three months ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think it has some legs. Uh, once again, um, the, the, the issues I see with it, and I'll ask you for your opinion here in a second is uh, there's, you're, you're kind of really locked into a secondary plan. There's not a huge amount of flexibility on secondaries. So I'm going to take probably banners. Uh, I'm probably going to take shock tactics. Um, and I'm probably going to take uh, maybe martial interdiction. Uh, and I don't really okay. know what else. Because I don't think... Um, I don't think that the... You know, a stubborn defiance isn't going to work. That's that's basically dead in, in Nephilim. Um, yeah. Like, I don't know, against like Necrons uh, or a couple of them, like some armies, no prisoners is a good choice against. Against knights, like obviously you take bring it down. Um, and this army can kill a lot of stuff. Uh, and I think it'll be surprisingly fast uh, with the plus one advance in charge. But uh, so, and I'll give props to my my buddy Stuart Park, who showed me how effective that can be with his all Deathwing list a couple tournaments ago. But um, so yeah, I, I think that's the secondaries I'm going to see here. Or I'm going to play here. Um, what do you you're think? Not, you're not what killing do you any think of the psychic ones. I said it's so you only take psychic secondaries if you know that uh, if the if your opponent doesn't have any psychic defense. So basically, mm -hmm. if it's into Tau or maybe Necrons, even then, like. Every Necron list has a has a Silent King, and the Silent King can deny very effectively. So, and they have, and he denies, and he has the four up, just f you, get out of here stratagem for a psychic power. And when I played, I I, I played overseas on my trip. Um, I didn't get a single spell off against the Silent King. Every turn, he denied basically everything. He denied one, and then one CP. Don't get out of here. It was very frustrating. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I but that. so yeah, so um, it's an option that's open. Um, but I, say, I think martial addiction is probably because the the chaplain is basically there to help get martial addiction, uh, because he can you know he's got fly, he can jump out, charge, whap somebody, uh, and then there's nine points even if he dies. Um, and if I don't think I'm going to get there, then if it like on turn four, if the character's exposed, I can just oh hey look at that eradicators ace them boom done, right? So. And you're not really yeah. feeling um, Oath of the Moment on this one? Just death ball into the middle with all your so guys? That's another good, interesting point. So Oath of the Moment, um, I think, is a good choice if, the, once again, situationally, if the mission has a center secondary. So if right. there's a, sorry, if a center objective. If there's an objective in the middle, then I think Oath of the Moment could, actually, could absolutely play. I think, yeah, no, I, I would probably do that because I want to kind of get to the middle and maybe get a banner up or something like that. And then Osimum would work in that case. Because I'm most likely not going to fall back from combat. Uh, I would get, you know, if I get a point for killing a character, I get a point for killing a vehicle, or I get, and I get a point for not falling back. Like, sure, that sounds fine. Yeah, I can you got stuff that. to do all of that in this list. Yeah. With the sniper's so, fight um, and all the heavy weapons. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the sniper smite, once again, you have to use it to like soften people up because it has to be in order to satisfy Oath of the Moment, it has to be a, a Stardis model that actually does the destroying. Okay. Yeah. 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 But uh, so yeah, 
Um, what else do you think? Well, the lack the lack of speed hurts a little bit because normally, right, you'd run like a bunch of Ravenwing things, bikes, a speeder. Uh, you have one unit with deep strike in the knights. Uh, you could well, you could deep strike the uh, chaplain. So if you really wanted to risk it for the biscuit, you could try and go get, do behind enemy lines. But you need both of those guys going in as early as possible to do that, to score as many points. Although you could turbo boost a apothecary if you really wanted to sacrifice him for that. Um, yeah. I, for me, when I build Space Marine lists, if I don't have deep strike in my army, I always feel like I'm going into a matchup with one hand tied behind my back. So the fact that you have one unit is nice. But only one unit, I also kind of feel a little antsy about it. But that's also because I've been running lots of Deathwing lists where half the army is in deep strike when the game starts and the mm. other half's on the board. Uh, and you could also start with the Deathwing Knights on the board as a part of your screen for your death ball. So you might not have anything in deep strike. Which that's what I usually I always... do. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, yeah. Um... And you're also not, you're a little open to deep strike because you, you didn't take the infiltrators because you took the incursors. So that's something else. If you're yeah. used to running infiltrators yeah. and they're going to incursors, you got to, your screen game's got to be a little bit stronger because you don't, they can charge you instead of being forced to drop outside your charge zone. So I could put the incurs, I could put the infiltrators back in if I drop the haywire mine uh, and the, well, maybe not. Um, I need, I need basically 16 points. Like I'd have to drop, I dropped the haywire mine and the power sword on the intercessors or the assault intercessors. Uh, but there's not really, like, I really want to keep the um, heavy melter rifles and I can't get rid of the multi melter because I'm model limited. I don't have a sixth eradicator with a traditional melter rifle. I've only got oh, a multi melter. Okay. So, um, which that's so, yeah, a key. Like, that is a key consideration when you're traveling to a new place to yeah. play with people you don't know. Is be as WYSIWYG as possible. Just oh yeah, yeah. No. life easier. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like all my centurions are built hurricane bolters, but I don't think anyone's gonna like assault. Like, ah, come on. You can tell it's a sergeant. I tell you, he's got assault. He's got things, right? Um, but everything else, I'm gonna do my absolute best. I think my my Kira Draxus model isn't actually Kira Draxus, but it's a it's a uh, it's the the female rogue trader from the kill team set. Oh, that's a cool model. That yeah, is a, yeah, I know. What yeah, you're and, talking about. yeah, yeah. And my wife with painted veil? it because it's her. D yeah, with the veil, it's it's my wife painted yeah. it. It's her D and D character. <laughs> so oh, so nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot. I was like, she's like, I need a model. It's like, here you go. <laughs> it's yeah. like you can use this one. <laughs> so that's don't is that a pistol on her hip? It, just don't worry about that. It's a rogue. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah. Um. <laughs> go. So do you? What do you think about Nephilim data for this list? I was talking about this with with my boy Joe last night. Um. And I'm not mm. so I'm not sure. I want to hear your opinion before I before I say what my thoughts are. Well, one of the things that I would consider when if you're if you're gonna collect Nephilim data is try and do things that are harder early. Um, mm -hmm. cause, uh, and you really gotta do some do some crazy commit stuff to it, like putting in cursors in a table, like in one of your opponent's table quarters and uh, but that that's no, it ends, it completes at the end of your turn. If it's a troop choice, well, right? it, it depends. So, um, so the other thing is Nephilim conflicts with banners in this list. I think it would probably right. be good at banners, but so, um, what it says is one infantry or biker unit can perform this action in your movement phase. If it's wholly within a table quarter that has not been collected and six inches from any other table quarter. Right. Um, so this action is completed at the end of your turn, providing the unit is still in the same table quarter, and then you you do the di the D six roll. So what I would probably do would be like depending on if I don't really need the infiltrate the in cursors to be like my Ford screen, I would like start them on the on the field, <clears throat> then maybe you pay, pay the CP to pick them up into into reserve, oh yeah guerrilla tactics and then on turn the three game. drop them back in someplace else right. So my Assault intercessors get it on one turn. My warrior or my my tactical squad gets it turn two, and then turn three or turn four, the incursors drop in and get it. Um, <clears throat> and then there, hey, you go. There's eight points, right? Um, and I don't. So when would you? When do you think choosing banners would not be a good idea? Like a six objective, like hold two, hold three mission, um, maybe. It's definitely against somebody. Or if I'm into, can... against an MSU list, yeah, something that's that just going to completely outmob me. 
yeah, something that's going to come in and just mob the board and push you off things and knock down all your banners where you don't you can't defend all all your banners. Yeah. That's where I would be worried. Like if you're if you're going into like Har- something fast like Harlequins or Eldar, just Eldar in general, where they're just gonna yeah. fly into you, fly over you, <clears throat> knock down all your banners. That'll be a problem. Um, getting swarmed by Tyranids, where they're just gonna come Bloody in and Ro- yeah. and and Bloody, take Ro- over Bloody Rose objectives. sisters. Yeah, yeah, Bloody Rose sisters. Yeah. Um, uh, but but against things that are gonna like if it's a Tau list or an Admech gun line that's just gonna kind of sit back and shoot at you, then yeah, I'd take Custodes maybe because you can out. Yeah. You're always gonna have more models and cut more units than Custodes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a lot of experience playing banners. Um, so because I've yeah. Anyway, the big key is to remember you score everything at the end of the game too. Because like you're going to score every turn, the turn you have them, and then the ones you have up at yeah. the end of the game also count. So it's always important to, to hold on to your flags at the very end. So like even if mm-hmm. it's like oh I th- on the last turn I'm going to run around and set up banners, like it's worth it because you're still going to get a point for it, even though you're not going to have another yeah. command. Yeah, no, that's phase. true. That's true. That's true. And so I keep banners... it in your back pocket. Can banners be raised by characters? I don't remember. I, I think that, that might be... That was the point where they might not have been able to, and I think they changed it. It says one or more infantry units. Yeah, that was one of the so big my, changes. They used yeah. to not be able to. My apothecary can't, but the chaplain can. He's got fly. Yep. <laughs> so, so yeah. There you um, go. All right. Yeah, so like I said, the, the menu of, of options for the secondaries is somewhat limited and the speed is somewhat limited. And the other thing I have an issue with this list is the range is low. So all my killing yeah. power is at 24 inches. You know, if, yeah. if I end up in a long, you know, short edge to short edge against a, a Tau gun line, I'm going to have problems uh, and, unless yeah. I get a lot of cover to help me out. Right. So that you know is, this event is that's running the risk. GW train. I don't, I don't know anything. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I, I, and the player pack was, um, I think it said, you know, pay on entry, bring your own beer. <laughs> All so, right. Okay. So basically we'll bring, uh, bring your bowling <laughs> shoes. Cause we're going to be on planet bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's like a dude. game room in, it's a game room in downtown Hilo. Uh, so I've got, I've got no reason to suspect that it won't be quality. I've played in tournaments on Excellent. Big Island before, but, but only on the other side on, in Kylo Kona. So eh, anyway, so that's that's the list. Um, oh, other thing. So Ezekiel's powers: Mind Worm, Aversion, and Repugnance. So Mind Worm is you know fight last. Uh, the idea is like I want to, if big stuff comes to me, I want to be able to sh- make him fight last. Uh, aversion is the minus one to hit and minus one attack if you get with close to Ezekiel. Once again, like the Scorpex charge me right, or the Orc Blob charges yeah. me, uh, and then Repugnance is to make my Centurions go crazy. Yep. But it will also work very well on the Assault Intercessors and the Deathwing Knights. Yep. And is and Azrael. Because <laughs> your boy <laughs> re-rolling all his all his hits, you're in all his wounds, chasing those mortal wounds from the Sword of Secrets. So yep. yeah. Um I said, Ooh. I think it's got some I think it's got some play. I, I need like I I need to get practice on how to move it. So I'm gonna play it at least once before I go out there. Uh, and I need call. to yeah, I need to build the incursors. I don't have any incursors. I have infiltrators, but once again, because I'm going to a non, uh, something I don't know. Like I want to, I don't want to say, "Hey, Phobos Marines or Phobos Marines would be cool, right?" Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and pick up a, a box of incursors tomorrow and then paint them or build them uh, on Monday and maybe try and paint them on Tuesday. So, and if you have regular yeah. um, intercessor bits. I had to go when I did mine. I had to go steal the knife hands out of the intercessor box to put a knife because I bought like a ten man box, and so to get enough knives hmm. to have every guy holding his knife out, I had to go steal some shoulder, some arms from the intercessor box because hmm. that was like a big. I might have that everybody had a knife out. I might have some reavers somewhere, and they have knives. Okay, that would work too. Yeah, that would work too. Maybe I'm not sure. Right, so you, yeah. Go ahead. So we're ready for our monthly challenge slash slash. Yeah, let's let's segment. do it. Tell All me right, if so you got any comments about my list. Tell me what you think in the comments. <laughs> okay, comments below. Yeah. Comments below. Comments below. So, 
So our and we absolutely can. Here, sorry, real quick. We no absolutely worries. can post this list in the show notes because it's ours. So sure, do that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right, there you go. Uh, so the uh, this month's challenge was to attend an event. So I had two opportunities. Uh, one was to go to a singles tournament up near Chicago. Uh, the problem I had was the day lists were due. Uh, was a terrible day for me at work. Came home late and job's very physical. And I was exhausted. And I basically slept through the, the list submission. And according to the rules for the event, I was basically going to have to play every game 15 points down. And if you're someone Ooh. like me that has Ooh. not won a a game competitively in over a year by myself without a partner because I won one game with our Tau player and our team event at Adepticon. Uh, going into a, an event where I'm playing down 15 points, I was like, per game, I was like, mm, that might just mean I'm out, boys. Uh, so I ended up not going to that event because I was like, I'm not, it's not worth the time and the money for me uh, at this point in time, especially since I'm planning on moving. So I missed out on that. Uh, and then today I went to my alma mater, Wabash College, to do a painting seminar. We were working on some Battletech stuff. Uh, and it ended up being, because not a lot of people showed up, just sort of me, the professor that ran the, the gaming club uh, mm -hmm. that plays a lot of miniature games, has like, he got the college to invest in 3D printers to make molecule nice. models for the science department. <laughs> and what well has done, ended sir. up happening is, is <laughs> well that he done. has like, uh, Necron infused Tyranids. He has like an entire 3D printed indoor uh, kill team board where it looks like the inside of a starship. He has, you know, love it. Giant Imperial Knight sized scaled uh, battle mechs. Uh, he has epic scale Space Marine armies, just like mm -hmm. giant armies of all the Forge World stuff down in epic scale. You know, you know, all college stuff so yeah, uh, and yeah as like, one does and then like the, yeah. the 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 chemistry lab that the fume hood instead of for doing like chemical experiments that's where he does all of his resin printing slash all of his <laughs> air gun painting so he has okay. like the giant like science approved fume hood for airbrushing you know mm -hmm. stuff you wish you could have <laughs> at your house so uh, yeah. basically it was me hanging out with him and one of my old roommates used to play a lot of 40k with so there really wasn't as much teaching as us just kind of sitting around catching up. So basically for myself, I didn't get this month's challenge in. Uh, and basically it was a result of my own inability to submit lists. So I apologize to anyone waiting for some exciting stories. I am leaving all the exciting storytelling to Heath. So Heath, what did you do for your hobby event for this month? Well, um, my, uh, my boy and I... Uh, decided to take a, to do the Hajj, and we went. Uh, we flew from Hawaii to Merry Old England uh, in, for a couple things. So the original intent of the uh, was to attend uh, the Vikings Saints game at Tottenham oh, yes, Hotspur yes. Stadium. Ooh, um, you said the words. Don't say the words. <laughs> Bailey, in case you didn't oh, know, is an, <laughs> is an Arsenal fan. Is an Arsenal fan. Uh, yeah. And so the fact that the game was hosted in the Tottenham Stadium uh, oh. was somewhat was somewhat disconcerting to him, but it's a it's a lovely venue and they yeah. it was a great seats Definitely. and we had a great time at the game um, and nobody no NFL team knows how to knows how to put fear in the hearts of their fans like the Vikings so skull, uh, but they won <laughs> with a crazy double doink field goal uh, that was missed by the Beautiful. Saints so twenty eight to twenty five anyway. Um, so there you go. That was that. So that was our, our Sunday. Monday, we did some stuff. We did some tour stuff. Tuesday, we got on the train from London and went up to Nottingham oh, yes. and walked down from the train station. It's about a half hour walk, totally doable, down the little canal uh, to Warhammer yeah. World. So we got there at about 10, 15, uh, went in, dropped our bags off. Um, we packed our We packed an army each from Hawaii nice. all the way to London, all the way to England, <laughs> and then through the rest of the trip, just so we could go play at Warhammer World, which we which we did. So um, I will go ahead here and, pardon me, uh, let's see if I can find what I'm looking for in my photo feed. It's in here somewhere. Boop, 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 boop. 
and I've done this yeah, hodge too, and it's it's very easy to do this in one day. Like you just day trip. To yeah, 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 yeah. You can day, yeah, you can day trip up there from uh, like we left London at seven thirty. It's a two hour train ride on the East yeah. Midlands. Um, the tickets were for two of us round trip uh, was about a hundred pounds, twenty five pounds each way. Totally worth it. All right, and if you uh, so, and if you go to Nottingham too, uh, the castle, which is more of a manor house, is nice. The famous Nottingham Castle for Mom and Hood, and then like there's like a shopping area there that's like really really nice. I remember when I was a kid, I went there. Ah, here we go, wonderful. All right, Continue so um, sharing some of the pictures. So this is the gaming hall at Warhammer World. It's uh, set inside of a like a, a Dwarden themed kind of castle. So some of their tables, uh, which are beautiful. Uh, we played a oh, game yeah. on a table, which I, I have in a different set of photos, which I don't have queued up here. Um, but uh, those are on my phone, I think, instead of I'm losing Lightroom because I took my nice camera. But uh, we played on a table nice. that had a crashed Warlord Titan. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, we walked through everything. It was really, really, really cool. We just, like walked through their like their actual store, the Forge World side and the game side. Uh, oh, some of the yeah. highlights. Um, so Louis Sugden's uh, Demon Army was there, and holy god, it is beautiful. That's looking beautiful. I was I was inspired. Um, I actually tweeted at her. I was like, I just saw this. You need to get paid more money. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah. Um, so yeah, the the models in those cases are great. There's a, a sneaky cipher, a sneaky cipher, yeah. a sneaky cipher hiding. But yeah. Um, so yeah, this is one of the big tables, another table. Uh, someone had a Horus, uh, a painted Horus. I think this is actually the, this isn't the Horus Ascendant model, but no, it's yeah. the older one. Um, that's the older one. So, so yeah. Um, so I walked through the museum uh, as Bailey recommended, uh, which was yes. seven pounds, 50 no big deal. And you don't really realize yeah. how cool it is until you walk in that first one and you exactly. see this, right? And this is obviously yep. Age of Sigmar, but this, 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 this diorama is probably 10 feet wide. Uh, oh, yeah. And there's some, so there's several, probably a, probably close to a thousand models there. I don't know, but like, sorry, it, it's, yeah. Um, get a little closer it's view. Ghosts. So these are all night, Spirits these are all night out. haunts. These are all night haunts, right? And there's little tiny, sections of uh of oh, a storm cast yes. there holding them yeah. back right and then like oh look once again there's the lady right um yeah anyway just just a just about. a real just a real mind-blowing one um just incredible dioramas right and then oh yeah uh pictures of Some amazing models Lord. yeah so once again more nine haunts right um Oh, the, so the, the first gallery they show you is like historical, and the second gallery is all Age of Sigmar. It just says the Mortal Realms, right? Yeah, the first one your, has the, your battle uh, cows. <laughs> yeah, the, the first cow. one has the famous uh, Emperor and Horus diorama, like the really famous so one. I didn't, where they moved it. To... That's actually oh, in. It? Yeah, that's actually in the 40k one now, or the Horus Heresy one now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it was like three okay. quarters of the way through. So. Um, there was a, an, a really impressive one that, which was a Osiarch bone reaper, uh, like diorama, which was just yeah, huge, saw that in right. There. And Where just bones, bone and bones and bones and bones and bones and bone nice. ties. And like, it's multi-layered. There's, you can see like, here's a diorama. There's a lot of reflection. I didn't have a polarizer, but, uh, there's like an underground section with ranks of, yeah, it's just, just incredible. Oh, just, wow. just that incredible. was not there when I went last. No, right? there, there's one I was talking there about. There he is. Okay. That's the one. Yeah. So this is smaller than I thought. So these are like the old Terminator scale models. So the so yeah. Emps himself is like an inch tall. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, and also we talked about oh, there today. Is Bayard. There's Bayard's Revenge, right? And they had the model painted there. So we were there the day after, or two days after the Golden Demons were were awarded. Oh, right, so we nice. got the so I think I have some pictures in here, but um, oh, we got nice. to see. Uh, let's see if I can find it. We got to see the Golden Demon winners, right? The Golden Demons. Oh, nice. Um, and I don't see if I can see them. I was just scrolling oh, through my, my 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 Lightroom nice. feed right now, like a scrub. Um, so you walk yeah, into the forty k one, and this is the first one you see. This is the Horus Heresy battle. Where the where corn tried to turn the blood angels, 
right? And you see, you know, Sanguinius over there doing his thug thizzle. There's multiple nice. Mastodons, multiple Spartans. Um, if you actually look, there's there's Kabanda over there. Like hanging up above it is, you know, like a Thunderhawk and multiple uh, like strike craft. Just, just a really cool diorama. Um, there's this awesome, it's a very small diorama, but it's of a Titan, just like getting awoken. Uh, yeah. Really, really neat. And then they've got in another display, just like a, a basically a, a series about all the individual armies um, with just these cool little just scenes about like there's Magnus and Lehman Russ, just like, what are you like? And uh, this is from the heresy. So this is uh, when the, I think on the Saturnine wall where the, the 16th Legion assaulted and broke. And then if you see down below, if you've read the book, you know, the, Oh, yeah. The tunneling, the, the tunneling drills. assault underneath the rule, underneath the wall. You can see like there's even another one coming up, like another uh, termite drill coming up, like that. It's just like, what? What are you guys doing? This is oh man, you yeah, can't walk wild. through this it's... place and not be not just be stunned by the scale and the scope of this hobby. All right, Jagged yeah, Icon. So... Um, yeah. Oh my bad. Here we go, Jagged Icon, uh, who is low key one of my favorite characters from the Heresy. Uh, for sure. But what Did you all came here to see... They still have the big room? Like the big yes. one? Is the big one still there? Yes. Okay, we're getting... Um, okay, my right. camera was running out of battery, so I got there. But, oh, uh, no. So they have a, uh, a display, yeah, is. which is all of the named known chapters of Space Marines and their heraldry. Nice. And there's the Dark Angel. All right. Yeah, look and at so it. Then, it's glorious. Yep. That, and then right next door... Uh, they had this is the Dark Angel display case. So this is the studio collection of Dark Angels, right? Yeah, uh, glorious. So yeah, like really, like obviously very nice painted in the heavy metal style. Um, these mm -hmm. are the Blade Guards. These are probably the models from the Codex, which I realized when I was sitting there taking pictures of them, and I was like, just got a little, little frisson down right. the spine. Um, a nice Redemptor. I said, and I'm yeah. I've got a Redemptor on my desk right now, uh, and I love just looking at the way they highlight it. It looks really nice with the the Deathwing, right? The Deathwing Apothecary, which I thought was really cool. This is all in case somebody cares. That those uh, this is taken with a Canon M6 Mark II with a uh, Sigma 30 millimeter uh, f 1.4 prime because it's really dark in there, <laughs> so yeah. I wasn't able to oh, use yeah. a zoom to, to get anything. But yeah, so this is taken with a 30 millimeter f 1.4 prime. Uh, okay, uh, I love the it's way that they riders. did their yeah. The Outriders and the Raven and the, and the, the Wing aircraft. Um, my Outriders actually came out looking pretty similar to this. And I am I like trying to look at like how they're, how they do the difference in black between the tires and the hull, right. which there isn't really much of one, which surprised me. But anyway, and more rank and file Dark Angels. So Green just we're talking Ray. about infiltrators. Yeah. Yep. Infiltrators and intercessors. And then the old classic guys in the back. All right. Yep, some company bets. Yep, and then old Captain Lazarus. Sit in. Sammy. The old Sammy, yep. I think I've got a, might have a zoomed in shot of him here in a second, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I love it personally. I love this model. Uh, this model has been my stand in Asriel for a long time because I straight up hate the original Asriel model. I think it's dumb, right? Uh, until I got my new one, right? So there's the, Librarian, yeah, Blade Guard Vet, and our Blade Guard Ancient, the Dark Talon, and Storm Speeders. And I like the Storm Speeders. I, I, I do. Yeah. I like the way they're done. Black Knights, right? And you see all the way they do this. So the brass on the wings, and yeah, just very, yeah. very nicely done. Very nicely done. And I think... Yeah, the champion there. That's a champion. Yeah, that's a champ, yeah. I think those are, I think those might be forge world helmets. I don't think I don't remember having those helmets on the sprue. So sneaky GW sneaky. Yep, and there's Sammy. Mm -hmm. It's nicely done. I think the white on the black looks really really good on it. But yeah. Oh yeah. So that's just the Dark Angels cabinet. And you turn around and look, and then there's yeah, an entire does. another row of all the rest of the armies. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is the Dark Angels diorama. Oh yeah. Right. Um, and I like I loved this diorama. Um, they said these there's like three Thunderhawks, right? And this Thunderhawk shooting missiles is just ridiculous. Um, 
multiple dark talons uh, on it, or sorry, that's a Nephilim, not a dark talon, right? Uh, and then I will think the, oh, my bad. Where'd it go? There we go. The circle of Deathwing is, yep. is, ball, is really, really cool, right? So yeah, and these are all again, I think it's against, the, yeah, it's a Nurgle demon horde. So Very there's cool. a bunch of little cool moments. Uh, and there's a, so there's a Thunderhawk, uh, like landed over here and there's a Chaos Reaver. This, once again, if you ever get the chance, if you're ever on the island of Britain, you need to go here. It's just yeah. really, really cool. So yeah, like um, drop pods, drop guys pod. coming out. Like let's get. And here, I think was, yeah, this is the actual uh, like quote from it, right? So yeah, over a hundred Primaris Marines in conjunction with regular Terminators, tactical assault and Devastator Marines being deployed via drop pod teleport. And no fewer than three Thunderhawk gunships. So yep. that is a significant portion of the chapter strength. Yeah. Right, again, and that Titan is just crazy looking. Yeah. Just crazy. They, they went all out, making yeah. nerdly. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was, I think, I was particularly enamored by this Thunderhawk with the with the uh, the missile launches. But yeah. yeah anyway, the, um, the, the smoke trails are what really get you. Re they sell it pretty hard. They sell it pretty hard. Yeah, um, I yeah, I, I I don't really have a lot to say about this whole thing other than like it's just crazy. Uh, like this, yeah. this is the muster of a guard force. Like oh, these yeah, all dudes. the custom Cadians. Yeah, and then you scoop yeah. out a little bit, right? And then, oh yeah, <laughs> there are just a whole line of tanks rolling down the thing. So yeah, the yeah. this is this is just bonkers, right? It's so so cool. Right. Anyway, so the last room in the museum yeah. is um, so a diorama of of just truly like Warhammer proportions. Uh, you come in on the second floor and it has a catwalk that wraps around it. It's probably 20 something foot long, like 10 foot wide, 20 foot tall. Um, it's difficult to capture the whole scope of it. But it's yeah. lit, really, really cool, and there are just so many little scenes of ultramarines defending this hive city against a chaos incursion. But you can see this yeah, catwalk wraps around it. So these spires over here go all the way up out of the shot. I didn't have a lens wide enough to capture the whole thing. I have some better ones on my phone because my phone has an ultra wide that gets wider than my. I think I had a twenty-two mil with me, but um, yeah. So it's, Did they it's have the assassin gnarly. deal going still? Yeah. So but when you go into this room, there's a sign above the door that says, if you find the assassin, we'll give you an assassin. I did not find the assassin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's just really cool. Uh, and I, I took so many pictures of this. I literally ran the battery dead on my camera uh, and then kept oh, taking yeah. pictures of my phone. But um, so, yeah, that's that's Warhammer World. Um, all right. It was it was a fantastic experience. Uh, so we got there, had uh, we got there like ten fifteen, walked around, looked, went up there. We walked around the store, looked at some stuff, went ate lunch at Bugman's Bar, which is right next to the gaming hall. You know, yep. had a beer, had a burger, uh, came back in, walked through the museum, were sufficiently motivated, uh, went downstairs, grabbed our stuff out, put it on a table. It was a Tuesday at like early afternoon. But there was like um, Manny Chima was there playing. Oh, so, nice. So, okay. Um, I recognize him because I saw him at LVO once uh, a couple years ago, the last LVO before, you know, the, the Nurgle years. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so we, so Joe and I, yeah, unpacked everything. We played a game, um, met a, a, a lovely gentleman from France uh, who doesn't have, like, he, I guess he says he doesn't play, he doesn't have anybody in his area to play with, so he, once a year, he comes to Warhammer World with, like, six armies, sets them all up and, like, take pictures and, like, plays a game against himself. Which is sad. Like, I wish the guy had oh. to get something to play against, but he had a bunch of cool-looking stuff, right? And so he set them all up in this, like, really big, like, kind of, not set from Canicus, but, like, um, what's the, uh, like, a Necromunda-looking board? So it's, like, really 3D with all these little catwalks oh, in between. Okay. Really nice. cool-looking. Uh, but yeah, we played a played a game. Um, I played a very, very close variation of the list I'm talking about now into Joe's uh, tuned up like competitive uh, Necron list. Um, I did better than I'd done in a while. Uh, but man, that list is good. Like, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I killed both of his Catan <clears throat> and a lot of stuff, but uh, it didn't. Yeah, but I did. I didn't make it. So, but yeah, I think I think the list has legs, uh, and so I made some changes and I played it into another fairly competitive Necron list a couple weeks ago, uh, and nice. and won pretty handily and killed the Silent King, uh, which there is always. Go which is always a hard thing to do. So yeah. Um, just, yeah. So we, we hung out till almost six o'clock, which is when they close or maybe not when they close. Anyway, I think they close at eight. Boy, we left cause we had to catch a train back to London. Um, we missed the train back to London. Uh, Ooh. and then, ouch. So, but once again, it leaves like, there's only leaves over like 30, 40 minutes. So we just like grabbed oh, a snack, you know. went back to the train station, waited 40 minutes, grabbed the next one. They didn't check our tickets until we were like 10 minutes outside of, like St. Pancras station. And the guy's like, why don't you have the right tickets? I'm like, well, you see, we missed our first one. So we have, they said we can get on this one. He's like, no, you can't, but that's fine. Screw it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's yeah. King's cross um, St. Pancras, right? It's, I don't think it's King's it's cross. Her- okay, King's, King's, King's cross? cross is it? Yeah. No, no, you're right. It is. It's King's Harry- cross St. Pancras international. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Harry Potter one. Yeah. So yeah. we didn't see that. Um, but we, we we did not we didn't have a chance so we 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 trained out of there once to go to Nottingham, and then uh, two days later we got back on a train there to go to Paris. Took the Eurostar down to Paris oh, through the tunnel, but to Paris. yeah. So um, yeah, uh, that was that was the trip. Uh, fantastic! Like so, we had a great time. Uh, everyone was super cool. The only not nice people we met were actually American. Uh, there <laughs> um, you go. But which is which is kind of funny. But it was more like an eye roll. Uh, but but yeah, man, just just really interesting time. Ate a lot of really good food. I did not think the food in England was going to be nearly as good as it was. I was thinking that you know the culinary experience in Paris was going to blow me away. But man, we had a we ate some damn good food in England. Anyway, there was this one little breakfast joint right next to where we were the Airbnb we were staying at. Uh, we went there like three times to get the the full English breakfast with the eggs and the bacon. Yeah, and the, all the good yeah, stuff. and the the roasted freaking tomatoes and beans and everything. But yeah, so. That was um, my trip. So I, I don't know if it's okay. It was not a competitive event, but it was for me an event. So I submit it for you. Oh, I think that counts. I know that counts. <laughs> like you went to Warhammer World. Like that's that counts. Yeah. Like it's like you said, it's so, the Hodge. It is the, the, it is the Mecca for all 40 K Warhammer gaming. You did it. You deserve mm. points for it. And yeah, highly recommend to everybody. And if you're in the area, like there's a lot to do in Nottingham, just period. And yeah, it looked like uh, a cool town. Top of it, it really did. There is a tr- turns out there's a tram that runs like a surface tram that runs from the train station yeah. to like a two minute walk from Warhammer World. And that's why we were late because our plan was to get a cab. And the guy at the counter was like, no, nah, bro, just grab this tram. I was like, cool, sweet. So we got there. Turns out the tram runs every 20 minutes and we only had 25 minutes to get there. Oh, well. Mm. So anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. So some swag I got. Uh, so a Warhammer World exclusive Cataphracti and Praetor armor with a hammer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then we talked about this a couple months ago, Mister the Marduk Cedrus, uh, Ooh, the Lord of the twenty the twenty third yeah. order. Um, <clears throat> I also got a couple of uh, purity Dark Angels purity seals. Uh, they might be nice. in my box over there, but I'm not sure. Um, I'll see if I can grab them. And then uh, I got these, which are the Dark Angel Inner Circle Knight Cenobiums uh, from oh, Forge World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah really, just really for just for effect, I'll share this back. Boom. These little gentlemen right here. So in case you didn't know, these guys are $115 on the... Um, on the GW web store. I got them for 73 pounds, mm-hmm. which with the conversion rate, we were there during the brief Liz Trust prime ministership. <laughs> uh, the, the exchange rate of the pound was quite favorable for Americans. So I got these things at something like a 30% discount. Um, my Forge World is so cheap there. Yeah. Cause I, cause they make it, they make it literally across the street, not even across the streets, across the parking lot. Um, I made so, a yeah, comment to just, someone today about really... Liz Trust being the next uh, orc warlord because that's what they did with Margaret Thatcher. I was like, <laughs> I, I'm waiting for the next orc. <laughs> okay, Liz, Liz oh, Truck at Queensbane. Um... 
<laughs> That's messed up, dude. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, I also got this, uh, which is a book of all the Warhammer World dioramas. I, oh, um, that, that I did not know was a thing, but that is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Cause there's a door. So it has a lot of background on all of them. There. It's good. Yeah. Cause I just saw there's the picture so, for the there, I, I, one that was good. I have, I have, so is it the, the one of like the, the Caradron overlords where they have like the, the sky ships and there's clouds and everything. There's one of those, but it's more like the classic dwarves where there's like a castle like in the side of the mountain. I think I saw the picture in the book. Is that not there? I don't it was in the... think so. I, there's I a know couple that... of like mountain fortresses. I don't think that one is. Yeah. I don't remember seeing that because they didn't have anything from yeah. the old world. They all had, okay. um, but there's one. It's uh, it's a there is a a Caradron Overlords one where it's like a bunch of their like yeah. airships and they're floating and the the bottom of the diorama is all like clouds. Uh, and it's really, it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, every yeah. single thing you can go there, you can just look at it and be like, wow. So, yeah. yeah. No, and they, yeah. and they change it out because I remember there being a dwarf one. I never saw that OCR Born Reaper one. So there is some go back and see it. That one's only like a couple of years old. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if you've seen everything in there, you're going to go back through, you're going to see new stuff because yeah. those dioramas are so big that you can look and see all these individual little stories and things playing out in them. Right. Um, yeah. I could, I could have, I could have spent hours in that museum, but you can, you can walk in and walk out on the same day with the same ticket. Right. You, you come back nice. on a different day, you need a different ticket, but um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely incredible. Um, like you can't go through that, walk to that place and not come out like at least, at least impressed by, by the hobby. Yeah. I don't know if you're gonna be a fan, but it would absolutely. Yeah. So, well, I know the guy that I went with, uh, the guy I was staying with, he had done Warhammer in high school because middle school because like that's sort of when english people like young english men like they get into mm -hmm. the hobby originally and then they like go away for a while because it's not cool anymore and we went and he like went and bought models <laughs> like the next week like, he got <laughs> i can't remember if he got anything there but like he like started sending me pictures he's like bro i went and got some so like he got totally back i into did it, it <laughs> i did afterwards. it yeah. yeah yeah no i i i spent some money there and i was and was able to pack it all back in my bag i i i Budgeted just enough room in my luggage to um nice. to have souvenirs. So yeah, awesome. so yeah, and then we went and spent like six solid hours in the Louvre, which I was almost as impressed by. But yeah, awesome. Anyway. So do we have any hobby challenges that are less epic and grand in scale for next month? Well, I'm listen. I'm gonna go play in a tournament, um, and I'm gonna finish a couple other things, and I will. I could potentially try and get one of these dudes painted. Um, Marduk set. So I'm a little, I was so excited about Marduk Cedrus because it's such a baller model. Uh, and then when, like, the day after we got back, Corswain was announced. And Joe texted me, he's like, bro, we got we to gotta go back. <laughs> I was like, exactly. Yes, go back. <laughs> no. Oh, well, don't my God. Don't you have God. to build and uh, paint those uh, incursors? There you go. You got to get that done by next week. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I, I, I do. That's true. Um, so, yeah, I'll, um, Green wing, I will, then? shall we uh, green wing? Well, we should green wing. Let's green wing. Let's call it a green awesome. wing. There we go. Call it a, a, a green wing unit from scratch. Or two right. green wing units that you've already got built. Yeah. I got I got some okay. scepters I need to paint. That'll work. Excellent. Sounds good. All right. And then community interaction. That's our community interaction for the month. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Comments we didn't have a whole below, lot, get... so... Thanks, yeah, get in, get in the chalk. Uh, we'll we'll get going. So, uh, with that being said, do you have any final thoughts on the month? No, I said um, it's been a real hectic schedule. It's been very crazy. So, I uh, I would like for us to. I wish we could release kind of on a more consistent basis. Monthly is about all we can commit to. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully you've stayed with us this far. Um, and better things in the future. So, yeah. Oh yeah. All right, so thank you all for listening to this month's episode of The Path to Redemption, the Warhammer 40,000 Dark Angels podcast. Our next episode will come out in probably, we'll see, we'll be recording in November for probably an early December release. Probably based on, probably early December, yeah. Based yeah. on when uh, I get the editing done. Uh, so please, in the meantime, subscribe, like, and comment below. Get in our inter community interaction segment. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us on your preferred podcasting service, 
And last but not least, we would like to thank Purple Planet for the use of their music. And until next time, I'm Bailey from Bankless Wargaming. This is Heath with Team Save War White. Aloha. Stay loyal, angels. 